All right, guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Mildot Master, which is an analog uh, device designed to help long range shooters with uh, things like range estimation, uh, measuring objects, uh, angle shooting, uh, mill to MLA conversions, and all those sorts of things. Okay, so in this video, we'll be uh, showing you not only how to use it, but I'll be giving you some final thoughts on what I think of, uh, of the device. Now, the Mildot uh, Master itself. When you do purchase it, it comes with a handy little uh, manual which uh, walks you through or helps you um, helps explain how to use it as well. Um, but sometimes there's just nothing better than and watching someone else do it. So that's what this video is all about. Now, yes, it's called the Mildot Master and it is designed specifically for people using scopes with a Mildot reticle. However, um, it's also usable uh, for folks that have uh, minute of angle reticles. All right, and in this video I'll be showing you how you can um, basically manipulate the Mildot Master so it will work uh, for you if you have a minute of angle reticle. All right, so uh, without mucking around, um, my name's Jeremy, I'm from tacticalclassroom.com and um, yeah, let's crack on with the video and I'll show you how to work this, uh, work this little gem. So in terms of, I suppose, nomenclature uh, for this device it's just a it's just a simple slide rule okay with a card running a card system all right so this card here is the imperial card and you have target sizes along the side here in inches and once again uh, inches measurements along this side um, and in terms of range we're talking about yards okay so all these numbers here are in yards on the back side of the Imperial card, once again, inches on these two columns here. Okay, but the, the range is in meters. All right, so that's the Imperial card, and that is the card that, um, that comes with the standard Mildot Master, unless you specify that you want a metric one. If you want a metric uh, Mildot Master, that's no problem. You just have to um, make sure that you're buying the, uh, the metric version. Alternatively, you can buy the standard version and then I think it's about $8 US, you can get a metric slide uh, to complement it. So uh, this slide here is the metric one, everything down here and here, and these columns here are centimetres and the ranges in metres. All right, um, doesn't really matter which one you're using, the process is exactly the same, nothing changes there, the only difference is in this one you're working in inches and yards, and this one you're working in uh, centimetres and metres. Okay, so whatever whatever system you are comfortable using, um, either slide will work, and like I said, the process is exactly the same. Down this side here, you've got an illustration of a mill dot reticle. All right, and one to five is referenced along the side here, but it goes actually goes right up to 10 mils. All right, so this is your mills column. And then on the slide rule, which you can see moves up and down, we've got our target size on this side, which is in inches on this particular card. And on this side, we've got the range in yards. All right, and that references to this target range. Okay, so we've got a target range here with a little arrow and a line that references against these uh, range distances. Uh, below that you've got 15 through to 60 degree uh, look angles and I'll show you how to uh, use those later on in the video. Uh, the other side, uh, this, this slide rule here uh, is designed to convert your bullet drop into minutes of angle or mils. Okay, but if you, if you use a range card like this one that has your, your dope in mils or minutes of angle then this then using this for uh, bullet drop uh, conversion to minutes of angle and mils is pretty much uh, redundant however we can still use that uh, for certain other um, uh, obtaining other firing solutions and stuff like that so we'll look at uh, how to use that uh, later okay but we won't be looking at uh, converting bullet drop to MOA or mils because it's it's pretty much redundant uh, on the back, there's a spot here where you can put a, a data card or a dope card. Um, I'm running a density altitude one there, 
uh, and this is just a, a I suppose stripped down version of uh, my other data cards um, and it's basically on the back of this so if, if I'm in a bit of a pickle and I can't access my ballistic solver or my um, my larger set of uh, density altitude dope cards I can have a quick I've still got a quick reference that will get me in the ballpark okay so generally this back section is where you stick your uh, range and then the amount of drop in centimeters or inches that correlates to that range and then you use you use that in relation to uh, the bullet drop but like I said that's um, that can pretty much be forgotten about if you've got a data card on the back that's got um, your adjustment in mils or MOA. So uh, moving on, we've got the scale here, which is essentially uh, a conversion between inches and centimeters. Okay, it's not to scale, but it is accurate. Um, simply, you know, for example, slide this across like so, and we've got six inches is the equivalent to uh, 15 point. 3, 15.2 uh, centimetres. Okay, so easy to use. And then we've got this scale on the right hand side here, which is um, for look angles. Alright, and that comes into play later on. I'll show you how to use it, but essentially this string here gives us the, angle, the look angle. Alright, but I'll show you how to do that later on. So, um, in terms of nomenclature, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's move on and um, start doing some examples, and I'll show you how to use this. All right, when it comes to ranging and, and reverse ranging and things, okay, if we're using the traditional uh, formulas, what we need is we need to know either the range or we need to know uh, the target size, depending on what uh, what formula we're using. For ranging, um, we're obviously trying to ascertain the range, which we don't have. So we need to know the target size. Okay, so for let's just say for this example, our target measures 18 inches. All right, and we can see through our reticle that it measures uh, one mil. So we take our 18 inches and we slide the rule until 18 inches lines up with our one mil mark. All right, and then we simply look across here to the target range and you can see 500 yards. Okay, it's as quick and easy as that. All right, no more maths in the field. Uh, short, sharp, and an accurate result. And to show you how accurate, you know, if we were to put that through the traditional uh, ranging formula, you know, we'd go 18 divided by 1 gives us 18. 18 multiplied by 27.77 gives us 500 yards. All right, so this analog device here was spot on with that, uh, with that estimation. All right, so moving on to the uh, measuring side of things. If we want to measure a target, all we do is, let's say we're at 480 yards. So we'll scroll the slide until we get to 480. And let's say that uh, the target uh, measures 1.2, 1.25 uh, mils in the reticle. We come across to 1.25 and then we have a look and it's indicating 22 inches. Okay, so our target size is 22 inches. Now if we went through the reverse ranging formula, 480 yards multiplied by 1.25 divided by 27.77 gives us 21.6 inches. Okay, so once again, Mildot Master, very accurate solution there. Okay, now one thing you'll notice is that on this particular slide here, it only goes to one mil. All right, so if your target measures one mil or less, or less than one mil, sorry, you're going to struggle to, or you're not going to be able to use this particular slide here to for range estimation and stuff like that. Okay, and that's where the second slide um, comes in handy. All right, so essentially we just use this side, this side here, to work with uh, numbers as low as 0.3 mil or as low as one minute of angle. Okay, so you can use this for minute of angle reticles. So if we're ranging and our target is say 10 inches, all right, and let's say it measures 0.3 mils uh, in the reticle. 
So we take our 10 inches and we slide it down until it lines up with that 0.3 mils. Okay, and that gives us a range of 900 and 920 yards. Okay, so if we use the traditional formula, uh, 10 inches divided by 0.3 multiplied by 27.77 gives us 925 yards. All right, so we're within five yards with an analog tool. Okay, that's pretty damn good. Okay, you can't complain about that. Um, same thing, we can use this same slide for measuring as well. Okay, so uh, let's say that we're at 620 yards. So we use the slide, bring it down to 620, is lined up with the target range. Okay, and then uh, let's say that the target measures uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.8 mils. All right, we have a look at 0.8 mils. 0.8 mils gives us 18 inches. Okay, so our target is 18 inches in, in, in size. Now if you use the traditional formula, 620 yards multiplied by 0.8 divided by 27.77 gives us 17.9 inches. All right, so pretty much spot on. So a very, very handy little tool. Now as I mentioned before, Okay, the mill dot master, yep, it's primarily designed for use with, with mill dots, but by using this scale here, um, we can actually use it for minutes of angle as well. So if you've got a minute of angle reticle, the mill dot master will work for you. All right, and that's simply a case of, um, of uh, working through this particular slide. Okay, this slide doesn't have as much adjustment in it as this particular slide here, which is designed for mills. Okay, but we can work in multiples and things like that, and I'll show you how to do that um, right now. So, if we're going to be ranging, and we're going to be using uh, this side here because we're using a minute, a minute of angle reticle, not a mill reticle. Okay, all we do is we take, uh, let's say we've got a, an 18 inch target, okay, and it measures 3 minutes of angle. So we take our 18 inches on here and we slide it down until it lines up with uh, 3 minute of angle, okay, down this column here. So 3 minute of angle, 18 inches, gives us a target range of, what was that, 570, 570 yards. Okay, and if we use the old school um, formula, 18 divided by 3 multiplied by 95.5 gives us 573 yards. Okay, so with this system, we're within 3 yards. All right, which is pretty, like I said, pretty bloody good. Uh, measuring, once again, can be done on this side. Uh, let's say we're at 380 yards, for example. Uh, we just move our slide ruler to we're at 380. All right, and let's say the target measures um, nine minutes of angle in the reticle. Come across to nine minutes of angle. Look across at your slide rule, and we've got 36 inches. All right, so we know our target is 36 inches uh, across or high. All right, so it's as simple as that. Uh, as I mentioned before, you know, this scale only goes to 4.5 mils, whereas this one goes to 10 mils. Okay, so... You've got less room uh, on this particular slide. It only comes up to 15 MOA. So in, in situations where the, um, the target measures more than that, okay, what you can do is work in multiples, as, as previously mentioned. And I'll show you how to do that now. But basically, uh, if, for example, the target size was, say, 24 minutes of angle in the reticle, okay, just divide it in two, and you get... 12. Okay, so 24 divided by 2 gives you 12, and as you can see, 12 MOA is on the scale, which means we can work with that. All right. Um, you know, if it was a larger number, say um, I don't know, 40 minutes of angle, just say. Okay, um, dividing it by 2 only is, is 20, which doesn't get us onto the um, onto the scale. Okay, so you might divide it by 4, and so 40 would become 10. All right, which is on the scale, and we can start using it. Uh, you just got to be mindful of the fact that if you are if you are scaling in that way, if you're using multiples, that um, the target size 
uh, is adjusted by those by those same multiple. All right, so I'll walk you through some examples, and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so if we're using, um, let's say, a, the object we're looking at is 72 inches, okay, and in the reticle it's 24 minutes of angle. 24 minutes of angle doesn't exist on this slide, so 24 divided by 2 gives us 12. 12 is on the slide, so we can start working with that. So what we need to be mindful of is our target size on this column needs to be uh, divided by the same multiple. All right, so 72 divided by 2 gives us 36. So all we do is we line up that 12 MOA with 36 inches. So 12 MOA, 36 inches, gives us a target range of 285 yards. All right. Now if you went that through that uh, the old school formula, you've got 72 divided by 24 multiplied by 95.5 gives you 286.5 yards. All right, so within one and a half yards using using this old school machine here. All right, and measuring can be done the same thing, same way using the multiples. All right, so let's say we're at 340 uh, yards, so we'll just slide our slider until our target range shows us 340 yards. Okay, and uh, let's just say that the target measures 20 MOA. In the reticle. As you can see, 20 MOA doesn't exist on the slide, so 20, and we'll just pick a multiple to get us onto, onto the screen, so 20 divided by 2 gives us 10, all right, and then we go 10 shows 36 inches, all right, but we've, because we've used a multiple of 2, so we need to go 36 multiplied by 2 gives us 72 inches, okay, so nice and simple. So that's how you can use the Mildot Master with a MOA reticle. Okay, very, very useful tool. Uh, something else I just want to cover off too is uh, using this slide here for MOA to mill conversions or vice versa. Okay, very, very easy to do. Simply, like for example, um, you know, 5.5 MOA come across from 5.5 shows as roughly 1.6 mils. All right, very very easy, um, and you can go the other way as well. Obviously, mils back to back to MOA, just simply a case of matching up the MOA slide or the MOA scale with the mil scale on the other side. Just forgetting about the inches in the middle. You know, if you want to. You if you find it's confusing, just pull that out and simply, same thing, just push it across. So, you know, one mil is just a fraction over 3.5 uh, minutes of angle, All right, as an example. So, very, very good tool for that. And once again, you know, because we're using this side here, we can use multiples if, if it's beyond the scope of the scale. All right, so... Uh, for example, you know, 22 minutes of angle is beyond the scope of the scale. So 22 divided by 2 gives us 11 minutes of angle. All right, 11 minutes of angle. If we come across using this, that shows 3.2 mils. Okay, 3.2 mils multiplied by that same multiple of 2 gives us 6.4 mils. All right, so... 22 MOA, 3.6 mils. Okay, or well, very, very close to it. All right, so like I said, very, very useful tool, very, very accurate tool, you know, so. Uh, what else we got? Uh, the angles, all right, so we'll take a look at the scale here and how, how that works. Uh, so basically it's, it's uh, based on the Rifleman's Rule, which is a, a method of... Uh, Scaling, um, scaling the range into a horizontal range, and there are more accurate ways of doing it, namely the enhanced Rifleman's rule or the uh, advanced Rifleman's rule. Same thing. Um, 
However, this this method will get you in the ballpark. Okay, it'll it'll definitely be close enough. However, you know it isn't perfect. So I think at about 800 yards, there's about 25 yards difference between the solution you'll get with the rifleman's rule versus the solution you'll get with the um, the enhanced or the advanced rifleman's rule. Okay, but you know still. It's going to be uh, good enough to get you close. Now, how this how this works essentially is you've got your your scale on the back here, on the front here that goes between 15 degrees and 60 degrees, and then you have that same scale on the rear, 15 through to 60. And essentially, how it works is you sight along this top edge here. Okay, your eyeballs at this end, targets at this end, and you basically sight between yourself and the target along this top face and um, what we've got here is this bit of paracord with a lead sinker like a fishing sinker or something similar and that just hangs with gravity okay so this is hanging straight down with gravity and then as you change the look angle you'll see that the paracord or the string that you're using corresponds to a reference point on the uh, look angle scale so as you're changing the look angle, that reference point, you know, I mean, this isn't going to change because gravity's just holding that straight down, just pivoting until you get to whatever your look angle is. And in this case, we're showing 40 degrees look angle. Okay, and then you simply flip it over. And let's say your target range is, uh, I don't know, we'll go 800, 800 yards. And then we come down to the 40 degree indicator and that's showing uh, 615, 610, 615 yards okay and so that's the horizontal adjustment um, that we'll, we will use okay we might be at 800 yards but compensating for the look angle gives us a um, 610, 615 yard adjustment Now, that's pretty much it in terms of uh, how to use the Mildot Master. You know, we've covered off um, both of these slides. We've covered off uh, measuring objects. We've covered off ranging with uh, Mildot reticles, MOA reticles. You know, we've done uh, MOA to mill conversions and vice versa. Um, we've dealt with, you know, angles, stuff like that. So, really, um, that's pretty much it in terms of how to actually use the device. In terms of uh, the pros and cons, um, as far as pros go, as far as I'm concerned, it's very, very accurate. Okay, it's accurate, it's fast. You don't need to do maths, um, you know, out in the field. And, you know, the best thing is it's got no batteries, okay? It doesn't have software within it. So, you know, there's no risk of software corruption. There's no risk of... You know, batteries going flat, um, water getting into the device and, and um, causing it to fail. This will always work. All right, so very, very, very good tool. And like I said, it's it's just awesome, really. Um, in terms of the cons, you know, there's not there's not really a lot going against the Mildot Master. Um, like I said, the the angle system uses the rifleman's rule as opposed to the advanced rifleman's rule so the angles aren't perfect but like I said they are pretty close and um, they're close enough to, to get shots on target so that's the important thing okay the only other thing is um, it doesn't account for uh, density altitude all right so um, but that's not a big deal um, personally like I said I run my dope cards set out in density altitude, so it doesn't really um, affect me. Um, I can just, I just take my target range off the front here, flip it over, have a look at um, the distance, my range, and then I come across to whatever the density altitude is, and then I pick, pick out my um, my elevation adjustment, dial it on or hold it, and then shoot it. So, um, you know. In terms of in terms of cons, the you know that's me being pretty picky, okay. 
um, the device itself is pretty pretty awesome and you know there are some sort of alternatives I suppose you could say out there uh, namely the whiz wheel by accuracy first and the uh, field density altitude uh, compensator from adaptive consulting and training services now both of those tools I don't believe are true competitors to the mill dot master you know I think that they are um, they work in tandem with if you know what I'm saying so like personally I have the mill dot master and I've got a whiz wheel to um, so that I could I can pretty much use use both of them they're both analog devices and they're both very very good you know, I can use the Mildot Master for ranging and um, you know if needs be the woods wheels got my um, can be used for density altitude as well if I don't have access to data cards and so on so um, yeah the t those two tools are very very good and the field density altitude compensator um, basically is, um, gives you a firing solution for various density altitudes but neither the whiz wheel or the density altitude compensator offer the ranging or the measuring function okay which i think is very very important because if you get your range wrong it doesn't matter what you know what you're doing you're not going to be able to hit the target so so yeah in terms of final thoughts um is it worth the money well the mill dot master stock standard with the um, Imperial slide rule I think it comes in at somewhere between 35 and, and 40 US dollars okay which in my opinion is cheap as chips okay for what you're getting um, so in terms of is it worth the price definitely definitely is um, and I think it's only about eight bucks or something for an extra slide all right but like I said you know if you've got no interest in the Imperial um, slide just order the metric version okay and it will come with the metric slide all right otherwise order the um, the imperial version all right but like I said I've got both and you know eight bucks for the metric version um, it was worth it was definitely worth the investment um, the next question I suppose is should you get one and if you're doing anything other than no and distance shooting, then I highly, highly recommend you get one. Okay, they are a very, very good tool. And, um, and once you've had a little bit of practice uh, with the tool, you get very, very proficient at it, and, and getting a firing solution out of it is very, very fast. All right? And um, certainly going to be a lot quicker than manually inputting data into you know, a phone-based uh, ballistic solver or something like that. You know, if you've got a mill dot mask like this, and you've got, you know, a density altitude card on the back or in your, in your kit, then chances are you'll be getting shot away well before uh, the guy standing next to you who's manually inputting data into a ballistic solver. So, like I said, very very good tool. Now, in terms of purchasing, um, they're available in plenty of places. Um, I got mine off Amazon and. Um, you know, it got shipped straight away and, you know, I couldn't be happier really. So what I've done is, if you are interested in purchasing, I've thrown a couple of links in the uh, description of the video, one for the Imperial system and one for the metric version, okay? And, um, yeah, little disclosure, those are affiliate links, so what that means is, you know, although you get the same, the same um, wicked price, uh, Tactical Classroom gets a small small bonus which helps support the channel so uh, if you are seriously considering getting a mill dot master if you could use the links in the description um, and support the tactical classroom channel that'd be awesome uh, other than that that's it for the video we're done and dusted with the mill dot master uh, if you have any questions you know, feel free you know use the comment box below um, if you use the mill dot master you know feel free to leave a comment and tell me what you think about it um, other than that you know, I'd really appreciate it if you give us a give us a like and a share. You know, it's not not hard. Just just click that little uh, thumb icon. And other than that, that's it. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. And thank you very much for watching.